Howdy everyone, it's me once again, the one and only Killer Rodan. And today, as you can see, I'm still continuing my Disney movie marathon where I'll be talking about the movies, TV shows, I don't know, whatever. If it's related to Disney in whatever case, in any shape or form, then we talk about it. So I'm going to be doing the second and final part when it comes to this because you know, this is a bunch of nonsense when you think about it. And these videos I tend to get really lengthy on top of that. So I'm just talking about these individuals who, like I said before, they're just ultra soft. Oh boy. If they said a no-no award, it's somehow internal damnation. But anyway, basically, what they're complaining about, like how Disney films from the past are totally different compared to in recent years, in, in the 2010s and 2020s, because they got too gloomy. So they need something more family-friendly, something more Christian-friendly. With that being said... Let's get into it, shall we? So here we go. Here, sir. Uh, but it also has Christian content and a very specific Christian section as well. Okay. And it has really So if you good... want to stay away from Snowpiercer, you can yeah, easily exactly. see how to do that. Yeah, and, and as well as that, it also has some really strong parental controls with uh, pin codes and all that. So uh, Redeem TV uh, is also a free service, has primarily uh, historical or biographical stuff but it also has other content as well um as well in particular um bible study resources uh and then sight and sound tv which is actually based out of the sight and sound theater um if you don't know what they do they put together these so in other words in order to have good family friendly to attend it has to be christian so you're telling me that nothing ever gloomy happens in the bible there's plenty of stories in the bible itself that's really violent. So it's like, what are you talking about? Like this verse, for example, it actually promotes violence. And also, I could just go on and on with this kind of a thing. Yeah, the religious individuals, they sure are keen to be squeaky clean and whatnot. But when the worst comes to worst, they become really violent, like really awful people. I'm not saying all Christians, but I'm just saying that the Christian community do attend to do some things, as I'm saying here, to be more exact. Not all of them, but a good chunk of them anyway. So when you think about it, I don't understand how these individuals say, oh, these movies, the Disney movies have become too dark or something, too violent. When in reality, just look at the Bible itself, case in point.
a lot of you Christians seem to be perfectly okay with killing, yet a lot of you Christians are, would continue to complain that, oh, this is too gruesome, it's too violent, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Massive grand scale uh, theater productions of Bible stories like mm. Esther and Samson, even Jesus. That's great. Yeah, those are, I think, all terrific alternatives. And so I think that's one part of the equation here. I think there is another possibility, and this gets to what you were talking about, Kristen. Mm -hmm. I think that we forget that a lot of us have a huge catalog of DVDs that we've bought. And we've gotten so used to streaming that just getting up and going to the DVD player and sticking a DVD in might seem like a lot of work. But, you know, if your family really loves the Avengers movies, you can have them available to watch. And again, it may not be as convenient as you know, saying, Siri, play Avengers, you know, into your remote control or your... Yeah, I don't understand this at all, because these individuals are keep claim, complaining that it's not family-friendly enough. It's not family-friendly enough. Disney should change the ways and whatnot. It's just ridiculous. I Again, none of this makes any sense, considering the fact that even the, the Avengers is too violent, even the superhero stuff is too gruesome for you. Again, like I said, in the other time I talked about these individuals, is that they're soft. It's so soft. They're uber, ultra soft. However you want to say it. Uh, because they want to live in a fantasy world where everything's all fluffy and cutesy woods and all that. They don't want to face reality whatsoever. So they want these entertainment giants like Disney, like Disney Corporation, for example, who cater to their needs for their specifications. And apparently the only good way to be a good person is through Christianity, which is ridiculous because Christians can be some of the most judgmental people out there because case in point. The pastors at Steadfast Baptist Church, now based in Watauga, have a history of anti-gay rhetoric. And that continued on Sunday when Pastor Dylan Oz gave a statement calling for the execution of gay people. Your phone. Uh, and I know Kristen's making a face like, what, <laughs> what, what's a DVD, Adam? I don't know what that is. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, uh, how about Blu-ray? Can we just at least get a little better resolution? Something. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. I, oh, man, I don't know. I feel, Yes, I totally hear you on this, and I think you could totally go retro, but as a millennial that... This is audio from part of that sermon. They should be convicted in a lawful trial. They should be sentenced with death. They should be lined up against the wall and shot in the back of the head. That's right refuses to purchase, refuses to spend that much money on individual DVDs. Right. You, I just, instead, I just can't you wrap have my a mind. subscription service that you pay for the rest uh, of your yeah. life. And it's That's like really good. Okay. <laughs> we get a military discount. That's what God teaches. Protesters showed up outside the church, including a mom who told our partners at the Fort Worth Star Telegram that the message is dangerous. I am a mom of a kid from the LGBTQ community, and I am not going to stand for you wishing death upon my kid just because of who he is. But anyway, I think I just think it's crazy. So I, I, I mean, I hear this argument, and I think if you do have a ton of DVDs, that's awesome. I own like probably twelve, and most right. of them are my husband's. But well, this is good if I you can do. Love you some. Yeah. Oz quoted scripture, but Pastor Rachel Bachman of Oaklawn United Methodist Church says his message contradicts the teachings of Christianity. The gospel message is love and not hate. The real atrocity in what is happening in this pastor's sermon and what is being now, you know, propagated to the rest of the community is that it's a message of hate. There is nothing that stands for hate in our Christian gospel. Watauga police say they've received multiple complaints from citizens, but say they can't do much about it. They say the language used by the pastor of the church is likely to be offensive to many people. <laughs> well, and, and what I want to get at is I think that culture works in such a way, especially with entertainment, that we just assume that we have to participate. Uh, yeah. And so I think what I'm wanting to say is we can actually take a step back and we don't have to go that far back in time, Kristen. <laughs> To a time when, you know, we actually did this a different way and there wasn't just this assumption that I have to have 14 different streaming services to watch what I want to. Yeah. And I think to that point, and I won't, I won't talk about. However, at this time, the reported language of the sermon appears to be constitutionally protected free speech. Attorney Eric Cedillo says while the pastor's words are disturbing, that type of speech is protected under the First Amendment because it's not an immediate specific threat.
<laughs> Blu-ray. But I will say... <laughs> 4K? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, there you go. I would prefer, like, as me as a parent, to just kind of limit tech. And I know this is okay, this is yeah. a constant battle, right, with parents. Uh, amen. And I have little kids, again. And so I, I know as this increases, my my viewpoint will probably change and the battles change. But we, for example, we just went on a family vacation, okay? We were on a lot of planes, and we have very little kids. Last time we brought coloring books and crayons and stickers, and it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. It's not specific. It's not something that is in, uh, immediate. So it's a situation where that may be protected, and, and I think their interpretation is a relatively reasonable one. The church issued a statement saying they've been vandalized and received multiple death threats for their beliefs. Mayor, I was so stressed. So I was like, you know what? We're going to buy those little Kindle fires, and it's the best parental decision I've made in a long time. And you can control what's on there, and there's lots of like parental controls. But of course, now we're introducing, Mommy, can I play my tablet? Yep. And I am... My husband is a, a lot more chill with boundaries. Well, like, sure, you can do it or whatever. But I'm like, no, I said, no, it's going away. We're not doing it. <laughs> the Southern Poverty Law Center that monitors extremist groups has labeled the church an anti-LGBTQ hate group and says their rhetoric could incite harm against the gay community. In Dallas, I'm Rebecca Lopez. Good. That'll probably change too but i have them in the drawer and they just don't play them so like right. sometimes during quiet time and that's not difficult for me as a parent right now to just say no and i would just challenge like parents i just growing up and again this has changed so much with cell phones in your hand but i just didn't watch a lot of tv i read a lot of books i played sports with friends and i know again i know that it's so different but just giving your kids like interactive alternative oh yeah you people are so loving and caring at least these christians in a way that's the thing with these conservative christians they want things to be the way they were way back in the back in the day like we're saying in the previous video folks this is something i mentioned quite a few times in the previous video and the, among other videos as well where these conservative christians just want the past back they miss the past again the whole thing with nostalgia just miss the whole thing with nostalgia because Apparently, everything was so much better back then. Everything was A-R-I. And even if you might have some problems, but you can't believe in, in each other, you can't go on and do what you want, and just praise the word of God, and somehow that's going to fix everything, which in itself is a complete lie. The acting as if the entertainment these days is too radically different compared to back then. So, of course, none of this makes any sense, because, it's, of course, things are going to change. It happens. And this has happened before. If there's anybody that's against progress, it's you can sort of... Okay, let me just pause the video for a quick <laughs> moment here because a lot of these individuals seem to really hate on the Japanese for being Japanese. Because, well, I'll show you right here. Here you go. Of course, some individuals will be going through some kind of trial, obviously. Even though some individuals may not, of course, have done anything wrong, and if they have done some wrong, people would just assume that all oh, Japanese are going to be the same way. Of course, there's going to be good and bad people in every group. There's going to be good Japanese, and there's going to be bad Japanese. But of course, the people automatically believe that they're going to all be alike, which of course is a complete lie when you think about it. And also because of the fact that, if anyone gets in my case, yes, the Chinese were also mistreated, obviously. The Chinese were also mistreated, of course, for being Asian, obviously. When it comes to the whole thing of the immigration from China during the 1800s, of course. So a lot of these attitudes never really changed, obviously, unfortunately. And yes, of course, a lot of people during World War II would assume that a lot of Japanese Maybe up to something, as if there were spies or whatnot. Uh, they have to be Christian. All these people have to be Christian in order to be good people. Which, of course, that's not true. You don't necessarily have to be Christian to be a good person whatsoever. That doesn't make any sense when you think about it. What, are you some kind of elitist? Yeah, boy. Okay, but I, I, I'm the prick bastard for criticizing the, the, these supposedly loving Christians. Okay. Like, yes. play a sport. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Go be with a friend at their yeah, house. Like, yeah. there are still alternatives where your kids are interacting. And I think that's really important now because a lot of kids have forgotten how to do that. Hence, depression spiking and all these things where they don't have a lot of face-to-face -face time with other people. So, if I'm going to give an old-school alternative, it'll be like... Oh, I love that. You know, go swim. Go do something, you know?
I love that. And I want to combine that and circle back to what Jonathan said with regard to having a family culture where you're in the word and you're comparing what you're seeing with what we believe and what we own in our faith. You do and, that well, Adam. I hear you talk about this all the time. Yeah, we And it's, it's an ongoing process. And I think um, right now, and, and I want to bring our conversation to Fur Landing here, we're living in a time where the values that we're seeing in entertainment, even entertainment aimed at kids, yep. are getting further and further and further from the convictions that we hold as Agreed. Christians. Uh, and it's confusing. I don't think there's a one-size-fits-all answer that is going to be the perfect solution for everybody. And so nothing here else makes any sense because it just is not – it doesn't go beyond the source level of – Oh, you help my feelings. Oh, Christ almighty. What works for you may not for work for the elder. What works for your sister may not work for your mother. What works for your mother may not work for your father. What works for your father may not work for the uncle. What works for your entire family may not work for the next family. It depends you as an individual. You can't just try to act as if oh, it's a one-size-fit-all for everybody. It's just so nonsensical. So what are you talking about? This makes no sense again. It's so dumb. I think it's a combination of we want to cultivate a culture in our family where we're thinking biblically and Christianly. Uh, we want to set boundaries. And yeah. frankly boundaries there are a lot of parents that don't want to parent anymore in our culture we just we want to consume we want to give kids freedom um, and so what you're talking about is kind of old school and that redirecting away from screen time so there's a i think a, a constellation of things and then if we add in some of the you know these new services that kennedy's talked about we really do have some family friendly and faith oriented alternatives yeah. where we don't have to watch arthur and wonder is there going to be a gay wedding in this episode? Yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy to, that that's not a made up example. That that... No, what's crazy here is that you think you're in the right when you're clearly in the wrong, and you keep thinking about the kids. Gotta protect the kids, the kids, the kids. And all. these individuals don't care about the kids, really. Or at least on the very least, even if they do care about the kids, they're just using them as a weapon weaponized kids which yes of course is highly manipulative because of the fact that they're acting as if that this is up to something what if that something sinister is they're just weaponizing kids as they often would do and it really speaks about themselves really in the grand scheme of things because they're afraid of change when you think about it uh, but that's where we're at and i hope that our conversation today has given you some concrete hooks and encouragement for here are ways that you can deal with this. Here are ways you can make changes. And here are some alternatives that maybe you can use in your family. Thanks, everybody. Well, in our second segment today, I have Bob Hoos with me. Bob is our resident video game maestro and maven. And he is going maestro, to... Maestro, I like that. I know, right? <laughs> He's going to tell us about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, and hopefully there's not too much of the latter in Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker saga. So, Bob, what's going on with this new video game, which is, of course, the latest entry in a long series of right. pretty popular and mostly problem-free games, and I'm hoping you're going to tell me it's the same this time. Yep. Well, uh, as people who have played this um, one of these movie games before know, um, the fact is that it, everything has been translated into a... Lego block world. Okay. And it's of course they want something more kid friendly. They want something more family friendly so that it won't be offensive, of course. They ultimately they would just create this really stale, boring, monotonous entertainment because they want to avoid anything that's could be deemed dangerous. Anything and everything would be automatically removed because they find certain things offensive. It could be the themes, it could be the message, it could be specific scenes, whatever. This could be a number of different things. They just find certain things that they think that might be offensive. It must be automatically removed. It just goes into the idea that it can't be too violent. I mean, it's just not that. It's just a mature situation. There could be a difference between have, having a mature situation, which doesn't necessarily have to be violent. It could be mature anyway. But I think it was explicit violence or the capable of being violent. 
Again, just trying to sterilize entertainment so that none of these individuals will get offended by by the images or at least the themes of the movie. Very appealing, very cool looking Lego block world. And as you mentioned, uh, it's the Star Wars saga. Right. Which means that it covers all nine of those mainline core Star Wars movies. So does it take like 100 hours to play through? Well, see, that's the thing. Uh, the good thing about this, you know, you guys were talking about kicking the streaming services. Well, one way you could do that is to, instead of watching your Star Wars movies on Disney, Disney Plus. You, can, you can play it, <laughs> do watch them through this game. Uh, it, it sort of streamlines everything, and, and it's also cool in the sense that it, it, um, it makes it funnier. It livens things up and uh, and adds a lot of jokes and quips, and so it's really cute, cute okay. through most of it. And so, of course, you've got uh, Jar Jar Binks in there, and he's just as ob obnoxious as ever, but the world around him is funnier, and so you don't mind as much. Okay. So there are things like that. Um, as far as gameplay, most of it is... Uh, made up of battles. You've got lightsaber battles and you've got uh, laser black. In my honest, humble opinion over here, I never really liked the Star Wars Lego series regardless of what entry it is. It, it doesn't matter. I just didn't like none of them, really. Because they come off way too kid-friendly. And of course, they're basically trying to say that the entire franchise should be like this. I mean, yes, you could have your fighting. Yes, you could have your laser fights like they were saying, your and your sword fights and all that. That could be allowed. Yeah, keep that in there, but don't don't have it can't be too violent. I mean the movies themselves have gotten really violent, of course. But point being is that you can have all this, of course, still, but make it more kid friendly. Just you can't have none of the violence like the movies have. You can't have any gruesome death scenes and whatnot. It can't be too intense, is what I'm saying. It can't be too intense whatsoever. You can still keep a lot of this that you see in the movie. Just tone it down. Is what I'm saying. Just tone this entire thing down, so that little Jimmy over here won't get too stressed out. Is what I'm getting. Because little, because these images, the gruesome images in the movies, are will not do. Because there's a strong contrast between that and then in the TV shows, like in Disney Plus, like this one for example. The fighting here is actually pretty gruesome. Actually, actually, the the fighting here is is actually way more violent compared to the Lego stuff. I mean, it may not be the most graphic thing ever made, which it isn't, but that's besides the point. You can make it violent in different ways. It doesn't necessarily have to be bloody or gory. There's other methods in to do so. This this is pretty violent in its, own, in its own little way, which I have no issue with, really. But anyway, the thing is that not even the villains could get along. Not even the villains get along, which, realistically speaking, is bound to happen when you think about it. Sure, that, that's, that does happen. But again, I have no issue with, really, and... She dies just like that, really. She gets impaled. She, they would not want that in a kid's programming because that's too violent. Anyway, if I would criticize Star Wars as a whole, it's not the tone. It, it varies from, from, I guess, medium to medium, whether it's a TV show or what have you, or an animation. It's the, the overall tone of it is, is vastly inconsistent when you think about it. And it's because of people like this. Of course, keep it for kids. It's for kids, 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 kids. Gotta get, make, gotta make it fun. This entire, this entire thing has to be fun, 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 fun. This entire has to be fun. Don't make it too gruesome because it has to be fun and the more fun, light haunted fun. Fun, 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 fun. Masters battles and starship battles, and you've got all kinds of other things like that that. Uh, that you would expect from a Star Wars uh, movie, but... On, on the other hand, there's no mess or anything like that. If you've got uh, characters smashing each other or, or even punching, there's some fist fights in there, too. If you've got things... <laughs> Things like that happening, a defeated foe simply falls over sideways or breaks into his little Lego components. <laughs> uh, Do it. So it's nothing messy. And then the other side of things is the puzzle solving. Okay. And so you can have up to two people playing together.
Oh, okay. And, and actually, as you play through the game, you unlock all these different characters. You can play as up to, like, 400 different... <laughs> Star Wars universe characters. Wow. And uh, So if I want to be R5-D4 from Star you, Wars, I you can do can, that? I'm sure he's in there, yeah. <laughs> the thing... Jonathan! I'm Carl! The thing is that you, you choose your characters and you can play together with another player locally. And then you go up against all these different episodes and scenes and try and solve whatever puzzles or... <laughs> Can we do more kazoo? Yeah, I like to kazoo. Me too! Or battles you have to get through to get to the end of it. Uh, it's really kind of fun. And in terms of problems, you know, because we as Plugged In, we, we'd like to look and see if families are going to be running into some issues. And they're... Kazoo can do anything with a kazoo! That's crazy! I like pretending different animals. Let's pretend more. Yoo-hoo, kids. <laughs> it's me, the pretend spirit. <laughs> wow, I just remembered the special. There really isn't a lot here. There's the kinds of things that you might expect. Mm -hmm. um, you some know, force the, stuff, I assume. There's the, some dark force side of that spirituality. But it's not heavy. It's yeah. not heavy-handed. And, you know, we, we were talking about the fights and things like that, but none of it is really very... Oh, sure. Let's make everything so lighthearted, fun, fun, just because kids over here w won't be able to watch it. If kids can't watch it, if the entire family won't be unable to watch said program, then there's no point of making it because you have to make sure that they're not, little Jim and his friends over here won't get scared too scared. That's what's coming off. You just trying to make stylize them. You just trying to make it as if that these kids will stay in a bubble forever and ever and not face the real world. That's not that contradict the whole idea of Star Wars. I would have to say yes. Because what I'm getting at is that those lot of stuff within Star Wars, not all of it obviously, but a good chunk of it, was actually inspired by real life events. At least to some extent anyway. I like the whole thing with Nazis and these Empire where do you think they got the term stormtroopers from? I love this political stuff. It's going to go over their head. They're not going to stand in any of this. As far as they're concerned, it's good guys versus bad guys. And that's about it. What's okay, that's actually not a bad assumption, really, because that's what this Star Wars is about. Uh, it can't be any deeper than that. It can't go on any deeper than just that. But okay, whatever. This is stupid. It's so dumb. in that area i think one of the more violent things came in an episode where um, darth vader lops off luke's hand yeah and, oops i gave that away oh. uh, <laughs> spoiler no uh, but but in the lego world of course he just snaps another one on you know yeah. it's all plastic so there's nothing really really all that nasty or any i think they've got some some sections that are labeled in the ESRB rating as mm -hmm. comic mischief. Comic what mischief. would that be? Well, it's really fairly lightweight. They've got uh, some people in plastic boxer shorts. Okay. They've got, uh, there's a point where a bunch of characters show up in a hot tub together. You know, th <laughs> bizarre. This entire thing is so damn cringe. As I was saying earlier, they basically want Star Wars to be just this lighthearted fun, and that's it. Because... Yes, obviously, even the TV shows have gotten pretty violent. Not just the live action stuff, but even the animated TV shows have also gotten pretty violent. They don't like that. Like I was saying earlier, they just want this entire shebang here to be Lego Star Wars. I'd say they just basically want Lego Star Wars, Lego Star Wars, more Lego Star Wars, Lego Star Wars, Lego Star Wars, more Lego Star Wars, and more. They, basically, they just want the entire <laughs> franchise to be just that. Because it's so scary. Oh my god! Things like that. So kind of taking familiar Star Wars things and yeah, putting them in slightly yeah. outlandish situations. I, th I think there's one uh, spot where this is bearded guy keeps showing up and claiming <laughs> that he's uh, Queen Amadella, you know. And <laughs> but it's played as a goofy, th as a goofy humor, thing. not something that anybody would go, "Oh my goodness, they've got." No, it's nothing like that. 
You know, we talk a lot at Plugged In about having boundaries, having limits, the things that we need to say no to. Yeah. On the flip side, occasionally something comes along that it feels like we can say, if not maybe 100% yes, a pretty wholehearted yes. Right. And Bob, I know with your kids and with your son especially, video games were an opportunity to build relationship and to... Okay, I'm confused. But then again, like it wasn't ready. So... If you don't keep it like the Star Wars Legos stuff, like the video games, I mean, or there's just franchise as a whole, I guess. Because it's been animated stuff or Lego Star Wars. But anyway, so you're telling me that if it's not like that, the entire franchise, and if you don't agree with the statement, it means that you don't, you're against having a solid, decent relationship with your relative, whether it's your brother, your sister, your, whoever, I guess. And then you don't want a good, wholesome life with your husband or wife i say husband and wife because they're they're these conservative christians you're against that you're against the wholesome family and the wholesome relationship or as in this case marriage if you don't agree on this measure so you want like <sighs> all right I, it's guilt trip that's what i'm getting at. it's just very much guilt trip. It's, yes it's a form of manipulation when you think about it but okay I'm going to toss you a little bit of a softball question here. I think yeah. you can see where I'm going. It seems like this could be the kind of game that parents could play with their kids, have fun, and really share an experience together. Is that correct? Well, you answered your question. Yes, okay. it is correct. <laughs> uh, it's definitely a fun, lighthearted version of all these Star Wars movies, okay. all sort of condensed down into, and they go through everything, by the way. They go oh, through okay. the, all of the episodes. Everything that you would expect to be in there is in there, but it's played as a fun adventure and much more lighthearted than maybe even some of the movies that, if you've seen all the movies, right. maybe even some of the episodes like, that you've seen. You episode might see. three is not very lighthearted at yeah, all. Yeah, <laughs> not at all, but they have a way, a, a magical way of of making it fun and lifting up the atmosphere a little bit. And so, yes, I think this is so definitely something that parents can play with their kids or they can let their kids play without worry. Okay. Well, thanks for letting us know what's going on with Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga. Thanks, Bob. My pleasure. One thing I don't understand is that Star Wars was always violent from the get-go. I mean, there might, there might be separate versions over the years because there have been different alterations, to the original films because people like this, these conservative Christians will rant and complain about how it's, it's too violent, it's too violent, or whatever. That aside, they basically want the entire franchise to be like the Lego Star Wars. They just want the Lego Star Wars, like I was saying earlier. But which is odd to think like this because of the fact that you're alienating potential fans. And the fan people who are already fans, you're pretty much kicking them to the curve because a lot of them may not want to watch this. I mean, of course, there's going to be quite a few who don't mind this. I mean, yes, the Lego Star Wars stuff was positively re received because there's a, yes, there's an audience for this. Whether, whether it's animated or video games, yes. Obviously, there was a fan base for this. There was an audience, for, of course. And... It's not that they're not making money off of this stuff because Disney and the Star Wars and all that, they're clearly making money off of this. I'm not deny I'm not denying that. However, but there's another good chunk that may not want to watch this or play this kind of thing. Like for me example, I, I don't care for it really because it's too violent. Well, I'm not a, myself a fan, but yes, I want to intensely avoid the Lego Star Wars like, like it's a damn plague because it's way too cutesy wootsy. For my liking, like ooh, oh, that's all adorable, like 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 it was like, like it was a cat or something. Ain't that precious? Ugh, Christ. Well, now it's time for a part of our show we call Pop Culture Connection, and each week our producer Ashley, hello, hello. Ashley, hello, thank, thank you for joining us today. She comes in with um, brain stumper questions to, well to get our mental juices flowing. And I have to confess that since COVID, 
my mental juices sort of flow like a meandering river. They take lots of turns. So <laughs> we'll see how well I score <laughs> this like week. Uh, but they're always related to some aspect of pop culture. We'll have 30 seconds to give as many answers as possible. Uh, I know for some of us, this is the highlight of the show. For others of us, this is the fear-inducing part of the show. Maybe we should rename it Fear Factor, Ooh. you know? Obviously, you, you want this to be a reflection on your own in your issues. Inner issues. Yeah, that's how you say it. But anyway, it's you that have a problem with this kind of stuff. And you obviously want stuff like the superhero genre. Since you mentioned the Marvel comics and whatnot way earlier, of course, you want even that franchise to be kid-friendly. Uh, and let me guess, you want you want DC to be kid-friendly as well? You know, Batman and all that? Yeah, just it's really difficult for me to take this stuff seriously. If it's all cutesy wootsy and all that, it's really difficult to take it seriously. But of course, according to you, making it wholesome and whatnot is the only way to make it worth it. Because, like I was saying earlier, if the entire family can't play it or watch it, then there's no point of making it, according to you people. Because, according to you, if you make it really gloomy and depressing, you're alienating the family because. You can be spiteful to the family, I guess. Like, you have no mores. This doesn't make any sense. As long as, there's, as, long as there's not no centipedes involved, yeah, no right? Bugs. right? <laughs> All right, Ashley, take it away. All right. So, Adam, I'm going to have you go first Great. this week. I love it. All right. And so oh, your cool. fun question and is... And those are the questions rattling in the box, in, in case you think it's, you know, like snowing. Right. Home, right? Probably All right. Is. Which makes you laugh harder, memes or reels, and why? Oh, I like memes because I like cleverness. I like wordplay. I like um, people who take an image and they do something really unexpected with the words that go with it. Um, and and I'm, as Kristen would say, I'm probably old and reels is sort of new school and, and memes is old school. Uh, I even made a meme once, but I didn't release it. Uh, but it was pretty funny. Um, now I'm just free associating. I like memes better than reels. So. Okay. All right. Well, that was four points. Oh, four. Adam's Very a nice. good meme maker. I'll, he really I'll, is. I'll find Seriously, can you just kill me? Really? To take a sniper shot to the to my forehead or something? Because that, that was cringe. This is so cringe. <sighs> okay. Now we're just going to some other stuff. Really. We just went off the track of the plot. We lost the plot here. But then again, were, were we really on the plot? I don't think so. But anyway, of course, they're trying to make their program really lighthearted and fun, of course. Because they're trying to show that, hey, we can have a good time. We're enjoying the fun. We can have a different life for time. Don't make it as if that it's other people that's trying to ruin the their entertainment and whatnot. Like, I guess in this case, Disney+, Plus, which makes no sense. Because Disney's not out to get you. Disney's not trying to do anything. If anything, they want to make money. They want to make money, and they want to make money. Oh, did I mention they want to make money? That's fine. So what's the harm, really? I don't get it. They basically want their nostalgia back, is what I'm getting. They want nostalgia like the old Disney movies from way back in the day. Even even though some of those can actually be, be pretty violent. I mean, yes, yeah, some of them can be corny, but that depends on which one you talk about, really, at the end of the day. I don't know. Just This just seems rather weird, if you ask me. It's just completely and utterly nonsensical right now <laughs> nice nice all right let's see uh jonathan let's have you go next oh do you notice we're going in age here are Did we you see that adam we are wow. it's like waiting for the dentist appointment <laughs> <laughs> jonathan your question is who do you think is the best actress of all time and why I, without a doubt, would say that the best actress is. Do you notice I'm stalling for time stalling. as I'm thinking for what actress? Why didn't you say actor? I had about 10. Best actress, I'm going to go ahead and go with one of my favorites. I'm going to say Meryl Streep yep. because she always brings it. And she had, I, I just, and being a dad of daughters, uh, I had to watch Mamma Mia. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> That was two, oh, Jonathan. Two. No, no, it wasn't even one. <laughs> it wasn't even one. But that was a really good her, choice, though. But when she nailed her song in one take, she she was my favorite from then on. Man, I tell you. One I feel take. your pain, though. I was like, Catherine Hepburn? 
Yeah. Meryl Streep. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Meryl gotta Street. be Meryl Streep. <laughs> yes. Anyway, I not sound my like question. such a sexist. I didn't mean to. It just, uh. I just, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm pretty Street, fond of, sure. of Mamma Mia because I got to play that same role. Oh. I know. In a, in a community theater version, it was, it was pretty so awesome. Fun. Oh. And that's where it pretty much ends, really, folks. Just kind of have this self-reflection. Gotta protect the kids. I don't know from what, so apparently the kids are in danger of something. Yeah, again, like it goes into what the conversation I was saying earlier, folks. Gotta put the kids in a bubble. That's what that's what this is about. Put kids in a bubble, really, when you think at the end of the day. But of course, he's he's trying to act as if that, hey, I'm a parent. I know what I'm talking about. You don't have no kids at all. Which is stupid because that doesn't just because you have kids. That doesn't mean you're not an idiot. Because when you think about it, this is mad ignorant. When you think about it, trying to use the kids and the fact that you're a parent, to use that as if it's a shield from criticism, really. You're trying to act as if that like, you know what you're talking about and whatnot, and everybody else is insane. I don't understand how a lot of you conservative Christians can be like, Oh, yes, we all love and we all care. We all want to cherish people. We are people on the end of the day, even if you're different. different. When those conserved Christians, all of a sudden we'll be like... Uh, all the stops were pulled out this year. I don't know if you noticed it, but all of the uh, professional sports teams uh, jumped onto the bandwagon, the NFL, pretty much everything. And I think this has been something of a shock to the Christian system. That's why, you know, we're trying to understand how to acclimate ourselves. I, I don't know if that's the right word, but uh, I guess just live in the world, but not of it. But the world itself is turning into something quite different than what we're used to in the 1950s, 60s and 70s. And, uh, of course, coming back to Disney's uh, LGBT uh, celebration, and, uh, well, it, it appears to me to be something like Corinth in the first century. Is it not as if the world hasn't been here before. Uh, Paul writes the uh, letters to the Corinthians to a people that were, you know, there in Corinth, and there were these massive brothels that serviced the uh, shipping industry. It was very, very big in the first century uh, Greece. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, this is Corinth in the first century. The diff- the difference for us is that, you know, we're just not used to it. This isn't something we we grew up with, but now it's everywhere. It's on the road signs. It's, it's in the uh, professional sports teams. It's every single baseball team except for, I think, the one of the Texas teams. Texas Rangers. Texas, Texas Rangers, right. And uh, so it's, you know, it's apple pie. It's it's uh, baseball, and it's uh, it's now Disney. So, yeah, we're living in Corinth in the first century. Yeah, and, and it seems like it is speeding up. It it's not just that it's easing in. I remember back in the eighties and you know the nineties when I started uh, doing home care nursing that people were starting to come out of the closet, and but yeah, I never thought I would see this day. I mean it. It, you know, we, we didn't just ease up the temperature on the boiling pot with the frog in it. We just we cranked up the heat trying to kill the frog before it jumps out. And if you don't participate with the, you know, expected level of enthusiasm, then you're instantly canceled. You know, so that's the other thing. You know, they're, they're expecting all of us to jump into the middle of it and just be rah rawing, whether it be in the corporate world or the media world or wherever you are, if you're not you know reaching the the levels of enthusiasm that is expected by the zeitgeist man you're gonna be canceled yeah and uh you know i guess if i'm canceled by something like that i i would take that as a badge of honor <laughs> to be canceled by them well and the letter to the corinthians certainly applied to what we're dealing with today we talked about this off air just for a minute but the apostle paul is saying yeah you guys live in corinth but remember, church discipline is essential. Be sure that, you know, you're not allowing for this sexuality to corrupt in the churches, which means I think he'd be after pornography. He would be after any form of, you know, sexual perversion, sexual abuse that's going on in the churches, whether it be the Southern Baptist churches or anybody else. He's going to be down on this, and he's going to say, hey, we're going to need some adequate church discipline, whether you're in the pre-Christian Greece or the post-Christian America. Either way, the church still needs to maintain a fairly high level of church discipline. Yeah, I just want to include a portion of that, because a lot of these conservative Christians have this same mindset 
and again and again and again and again and again and again. This is not a Christian nation. I, I'm just going to read a second tower, just repeat myself, saying the same thing again and again and again and again and again. And also, they have the mentalities of us against them. Allegedly, according to these individuals, people who support the LGBT plus community and the people who are, in fact, a part of it in one way or another are somehow taking their country away from them. I don't see how that's happening exactly, but okay. And of course, he keeps talking about the past. The past, the past, the past, the past, the past. And again, the past, the past, 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 past. I'm getting past and then the past and then... The Jesus, goddamn Christ. It's just, these people are so obsessed with the past. Get over it. And of course, thank you for anybody ahead of time for watching this because I know these videos can be pretty lengthy. I'm aware. At least the vast majority of the time, they can be pretty damn lengthy anyway. When it comes to like stuff that's of Disney specifically, I know a good chunk of them, it can be pretty damn long. I mean, I made shorter videos in regards of this, but most of this is extremely long, which I realized I, I'm, I'm aware of that. Just let anybody know, but I do appreciate anybody for watching this. I really do. Just, yeah, I don't mind it in some ways because it's a way to make some content regarding Disney in some shape or fashion, of course. But point being is that a lot of these conservative Christians can be really homophobic, transphobic, or whatever else a phobic can think of. Because that's how these people are. That's how these their mind works. It's me against them. Me against the ward and whatnot. That kind of attitude. So acting as if that they're in trouble. And they have to save the family. I mean, I don't get who's attacking the family. Who, who's attacking for that family? I don't know who's attacking the family. Where? Again, where? Who's doing that? Again, I don't know who's doing that, but okay, sure. Somebody somewhere is attacking the family. It ain't the trans people. It ain't the gay people. It ain't the bisexuals. It ain't the lesbians. They ain't, they ain't doing that. I don't know who's doing it, but it ain't them. That's for damn sure. Anyway, folks, I'll just end it here because this is so, this is so ridiculous. But yeah, I just want to do this concerning the fact that I've, I just want to wrap it up quite often. I would talk about these topics and I've gone to more than a one video. May I have to do a couple of videos or maybe three if I have to. Just want to wrap it up here and that was it. So thanks for watching. Take care. Until next time. See ya. Oh yeah.